What exactly is that big $2 billion ball in the Las Vegas skyline these days? And what pair of Italian Renaissance resorts stand to benefit most from being right next door? As if they even need more foot traffic than they already have. And even though Venetian and Palazzo have the largest restaurant collection in town, they never stop reinventing and enticing us with new culinary treats. So get ready, because this adventure starts right now. It's the morning after the hurricane of 2023, and here in the Las Vegas Valley, we've got cool temps, dark clouds, and dry pavement. Let me tell you something, my friends. <laughs> we really dodged it this time. A week ago, we took you on a visit to Mandalay Bay at the south end of the Strip and its new neighbor across the highway, Allegiant Stadium. Today, we're going further than that, up to the corner of Las Vegas Boulevard and Sands Avenue to take a look at yet another new entertainment venue that's impossible to miss, and the resorts next door that will profit from it. Of course, we mean the Palazzo, Venetian, and the brand new Sphere. Well, no sooner do we pull into the Palazzo parking garage than we see one unwelcome change. Paid parking is not that far away, my friends. These guys are installing a big LED screen, I'm guessing for our education. <laughs> the gates are already installed, and one of our favorite free parking spots on the Strip is going away. Note the red and green lights over each parking space are in place, and so is that payment reminder. There's no doubt, my friends, this is to blame. What we've been calling the MSG Sphere for years now has an official name, Sphere at the Venetian. One morning last week, we caught this view from up on the Sands Avenue Bridge. And today, we went up to the 10th floor of the Venetian parking structure to get a different perspective. Looking east across the huge roof of the Venetian Expo, impressive, but not close enough for detail. And now we go to our roving reporter, Paula, for an update on the Venetian Sphere. So, I walked that third of a mile from Palazzo to the Sphere. The project was a partnership between Madison Square Garden Company and Las Vegas Sands, who contributed the 18 acres of land. Groundbreaking was five years ago, in September 2018, and finally, on September 29th of this year, after a $2 billion price tag and endless delays, the world's largest spherical structure will open its doors. Acknowledged as the best live act in the world, Irish band U2 will be first on stage, beginning a residency and performing live for the first time since 2019. Production is also underway for an immersive sphere experience called Postcard from Earth, which will debut this fall. It's a multi-sensory storytelling journey that will utilize all the technology inside this unique structure. You can see the 1,000-foot pedestrian bridge that will connect the sphere to the Venetian Expo almost finished. And the Las Vegas monorail zips right by. There are plans to add a stop here. Some facts and figures. The sphere is 366 feet tall and 516 feet wide with 580,000 square feet of programmable LED on the exterior. Inside is seating for 17,500, plus more standing room. There are 160,000 square feet of LED display canvas at 16K resolution, and the world's largest beam-forming audio system, whatever that is. That is multi-sensory, all right. And there you have it, my friends, your gal on the street report. Next, 
we're heading over there to the Palazzo. It's been over a year since we checked out what's new in these two sister resorts. In the gorgeous Palazzo lobby, we already find an update. A new Japanese restaurant called Wakuda. Wakuda has an enviable location, nicely situated between the check-in desk the doors to the strip, and Lavo on the other side. The grand opening was in June of 2022, the first restaurant in the United States for Japan's master of cuisine, Michelin star chef Tetsuya Wakuda. The restaurant is inspired by the Shinjuku area of Japan, known for its vibrant atmosphere. The menu features the finest fresh seafood, incomparable sushi, and artful drinks. And the environment inside will not fail to enhance your dining experience. In our research, we learned of some new venues in the Grand Canal shops we want to take a look at, so up we go. This elegant and classy section is called the Sky Garden. Not only is it home to some of the world's finest luxury brands, <laughs> like looking in a mirror, right? But it's also where you'll find the famous wishing tree. This olive tree with its canopy of gold leaves and glass birds has heard and held countless wishes from visitors. But we're on the hunt for new and noteworthy, and this is it. Flight Club Social Darts. And how's this for location? Just a few steps from the Sands Avenue Bridge. The traditional game of darts born in British pubs has been revolutionized with innovative technology and paired with food and drinks for a unique social experience. With 20 playing areas, it sounds like a fun night out for a group. Plus, the theming in here appeals to the Anglophile in us, no doubt. As we swing our gaze around the Fight Club past Grimaldi's Pizzeria, here's another new venue in Grand Canal Shops. It's called Villa Azur. Wow, does this make a statement with the sweeping curve and molding details. According to the all-knowing web, Villa Azur is a mashup of the elegant upscale European lifestyle, <laughs> think French Riviera, with the beat and vibe of Miami Beach. The menu offers equally elegant culinary creations, while guests enjoy cabaret-style entertainment into the wee hours. Now, if you're not quite that highbrow and you enjoy a draft beer in a football game, you're gonna love this place, Trustworthy Brewery. It is the first and only craft brewery on the Las Vegas Strip. They offer a nice range of West Coast brews as well as seasonal options. Plus, you can take a brewery tour to learn more about what's in your glass. The menu is all American and they do weekend brunch and happy hour specials. Whenever you're in the Grand Canal shops, you just have to take a minute to enjoy the Palazzo Atrium. From this angle, you're standing above the Palazzo Casino entrance, looking over the gondola and towards the love sculpture and waterfall. And if you pivot, the elegant sky garden area is behind you. The opposite side of this soaring skylit space puts you directly above the waterfall and sculpture, one of the most photographed art projects on the Strip. And if you pivot from here, you encounter the Grand Canal. With more than 160 stores and restaurants, the Grand Canal shops are a must-do experience when you're in Las Vegas, and they have the awards to prove it. Looky what we found down at atrium level. This sweet spot called Donatique opened literally two weeks ago and drew us in like a magnet. Donatique is described as an artistic dessert boutique creating culinary works of art using the donut. Why? Because donuts are the ultimate happy food. 
Native Hawaiian and local Las Vegas pastry chef Karis Kuwana has combined traditional flavors and recipes with street style to make something that's as beautiful to look at as it is to eat. We just love the whimsical decor and the convenience of grabbing your fresh brewed hot beverage along with your sweet treat. In this spot, with that display case, we predict huge success for Donatique. Did we buy one? Of course we did! Filled with lemon curd and with a candied lemon slice on top. Absolutely superb! All right, let's head next door and take a spin through the Venetian. This is definitely not new. In fact, this magnificent hallway was first unveiled when the resort opened in 1999. It is just one of many faithful reproductions of the magnificence of Renaissance Venice and spectacular no matter how many times we've seen it. At the end, as you approach the Venetian lobby, is the recreation of the armillary sphere under a frescoed ceiling and skylight. Another example of the incredible craftsmanship evident in this resort. On the lookout for what's new, the classy Dorsey Bar has been rebranded as the Juliet Cocktail Room. This was always one of our favorite cocktail lounges. In fact, we were just there last fall with some friends from Sweden. Looks like it has the same basic bones, even that lovely library corner, but now a definite Victorian vibe in here with the decor and color scheme. While you enjoy world-class cocktails, you can listen to dueling pianos and later on, live DJs spinning the tunes. Because traditional food courts are not nearly as plentiful as they used to be, we just wanted to mention this one on the Venetian casino floor. We are walking through at 10 a.m. on a Monday morning and there are plenty of guests enjoying the convenience of a grab-and-go breakfast. In the market for a Beamer, especially a free one, well, here you go. Grazi Rewards Club members have a chance at these two beauties, part of our citywide promotions for the upcoming Formula One race. Now here's a rare sight. The photo spot is empty. You better jump in there and snap a pic, quick. So last week, we mentioned a busy Starbucks strategically located in the Mandalay Bay Convention area. That crowd is nothing compared to what we witnessed on Monday morning at the newly renamed Venetian Expo, two and a quarter million square feet of meeting space mere steps from the two resorts, all indoors and connected. And today, a sea of attendees at a tech convention called VMware Explore. I simply cannot tell you how happy we are to see these huge convention crowds back in Las Vegas. All right, we're back at Palazzo where we parked, but still looking for the new and noteworthy. Ha Salon just opened on July 15th, the second dining venue at Palazzo from famed Israel chef El Shani. In Hebrew, Ha Salon translates to the living room. There will be two seatings per evening, one in a more traditional dining environment and the latter one bringing in the energy of Tel Aviv. In either case, guests will be treated to an ever-changing menu of Mediterranean and Israeli dishes from land and sea made from the freshest seasonal ingredients. Chef Shani's street food outlet called Miznan has been open directly across the hall since last December. There are six Miznan locations in the United States, but this is the first on the West Coast. Miznan has a loyal following for its unique take on the pita and the top quality meats and vegetables that fill it. We find the easy access counter and the hand-drawn signage really appealing. So much so that we decided to stop back after they opened and get a to-go order for lunch. Oh, 
rotisserie chicken. <laughs> That's a mouse. Hmm. Amazing spices, really different. Really different. Mmm. It's chicken skin. <laughs> Good. That is so good. That is, that's the best thing I've eaten in three years. I watched him make it and it was made with love. I'm glad you like it. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Well, what did you think of our lunch? Yeah, I'll tell you what. She went out and she got this and brought it home. I wasn't prepared camera ready, <laughs> but I'll tell you what. That was amazing. I'll tell you what was in it. It was lamb a burger, like a chopped up lamb. Yeah, it was. And I, the, the best I've ever had in my life was up in Cedar City until I had this one. This was one of the best lamb sandwiches I ever had in my life. And obviously you could tell how absolutely enthusiastic he was over this that flavor. So I'm so glad I stopped there. Give it a try if you're into, you know, kind of Mediterranean food because that was fantastic. Really, really good. If you're down there, give it a try because, and besides that, they were pretty nice to you too, right? They were. It was terrific, honestly. Now, let me talk about Donutique. You guys, I'm kind of a donut connoisseur. I've tried a lot of donuts here in Las Vegas, and honestly, sometimes they're more pretty than they are good. I thought that about the Dominique Ansel. I wasn't that crazy about the Cronuts. Yeah. <laughs> However, we split that donut and it, it was, was amazing. Amazing. It was really amazing. The actual dough. The really, donut really is really good. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What about that spear? I'll tell you what. Uh, uh, when when uh, we go, you go down to the strip right now, it is now a focal point. <laughs> yeah, you cannot miss it. And of course, yeah. you've all seen it on the news and lots of YouTubers have, have covered it. But it actually beat out Allegiant Stadium as the most expensive entertainment venue in town. $2.3 billion. <laughs> yep. And a lot of people call it a boondoggle. I guess time will tell. Yeah. We will see. We didn't really cover the Grand Canal shops today. We did an extensive walkthrough of that last summer and everything that was new in the Grand Canal shops. And we can link that in the description box and in the uh, end card in case you missed that. All right. Um, and what about the Las Vegas Sands? Yeah, we just wanted to mention, um, as you all know, Venetian Palazzo and the Sphere changed hands about a year and yeah. a half ago. February 2022, yeah. they sold. And now, can I just say, interject one thing here? Since Adelson left, it sort of went downhill a little bit. Now I think they're picking up their, their thing, right? We were very impressed by what we saw. They are really spending money. These restaurants and those venues that we showed you in the Grand Canal shops, they're very unique. They're very international. They're beautifully done. Um, so I, I hope, and they have 8,000 employees that they're really committed to. So um, I, we really hope for great, great things. for Yeah, simple when, you, when you look at it the way, because uh, Mr. Adelson really was top notch on that. And, he always was. Yeah, and, and it's going to take it's going to take a lot of folks to come up to what he did. And I think they're getting there right now. We, we hope so. We are very encouraged by what we see. And um, it's as beautiful as ever. All right. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification button. Anything else you want to tell these wonderful people, Miss Paul? I got a three for you're going to get sick of us on Wednesday. We're <laughs> going in the kitchen and we're doing sticky toffee pudding. On Sunday, we are doing our tribute to wonderful Liberace. Yeah, we're going to bring that up finally. And Monday? Now we're going to do a live stream. Labor Day live stream. One more live stream. I just want to say uh, one other thing from the other live stream. When I told everybody what happened to me, your comments and, and, and your support was just amazing. Yeah, honestly, I can't tell you how, how uh, that, that was a very, very serious part of our, our life. And uh, uh, just knowing that you all support us was really made it to. You always yeah. have. You're just amazing. All right. Hope you had a good time. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody. everybody.